Hey, welcome back to the SBP podcast, Mobile Filmmaking. You're listening to the first episode of 2024. That is episode 171. And I'm your host, Susie Botello. <laughs> We are Fade Into Film. Hey guys, welcome back. Happy New Year. It's Ryan McDonald and Levi Austin Morris. I must, for transparency and truthfulness, admit that Joey's microphone went out. So he is with us, but he's only allowed to listen. So <laughs> we're not, you're not going to know. But um, but we love you, Joey, even though you can't talk we to us. We love you, Joey. So, hey, guys, how's your uh, New Year's so far? I mean, three days in. What do you think? Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> it's going good. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's going good. Excellent. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, we have, um, there's quite a few, uh, I got a, quite a few of those film freeway judging announcements, uh, emails, and nice. those are always addicting when you get them. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we've had, we have a couple of festivals lined up. I have a festival that I'm this in Park City, but not Sundance that I'll be going to here in two weeks. And they'll be playing, um, I made a horror film in 2022 called Ancient Evil Moon's Blood. Mm. And, mm. uh, they'll be screening. That horror is film that the there. werewolf one? Yes, I saw that mm-hmm. one. Yeah, yeah. That one was so. was that one wasn't shot with a phone. Right? No, no, we shot it with a Sony. Well, congratulations! Like first that. of all, getting selected <laughs> depends on the project sometimes, and it depends on who's doing who's the DP. So on that one, we didn't use the phone. Levi, you just got back from Australia from another mobile festival. There. Yeah. Um, how did it go? Uh, I really enjoyed. Uh, it was it was incredible. I've never been outside the country, so I got to go to uh, Australia for the first time and just outside the U.S. for the first time. Um, and it was really exciting. I learned how much I enjoy traveling alone and the festival was really fun. Uh, and we ended up winning best feature. So it was very exciting. And nice. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. Um, and the audience response was super, super exciting. It was, uh, they were a very lively crowd. So, um, yeah. yeah, it feels very validating when that happens. So, yeah. yeah thank you, Joey. Uh, <laughs> we've got such a wonderful community, global filmmakers. Yeah. And I just, you know, it's like a new year. It's like we get to do it again in just about four months. Yeah. We're going to be together at the film festival, meeting new people, making new friends. Are you feeling prepared? I mean, it's just so exciting. It's like a holiday. (laughs) We need a mobile filmmaking holiday. I mean, I think your festival is kind of the holiday weekend for (laughs) mobile film, you know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you know, we were talking before about Levi's appearance into our film festival in 2015. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, yeah. and uh, here we are. It's 2024. It's almost 10 years. Wow. Wow. Dude, we should be like besties by now. <laughs> yeah. Right? Except I didn't get to meet you until 2020 or 2021. 2020. Yeah. 2021, yeah. actually. Yeah. Even though even though you came back uh, with the yeah. tea. Which is, again, I'll just say it again. It's one of my, it's my favorite short from Levi. Thank is you. Is the T. I love that film. And um, and now paralysis is just making waves and all those, all those wins will account to something. Uh, we are hoping, we are definitely hoping to get uh, a distribution offer. Um, if we don't, we're still going to self-distribute. So uh, regardless, it will be available at some point. We've got some really cool topics to talk about. Actually, one of them is pretty major. It's about this one thing that Ryan and Levi are doing, which is promoting their films. Filmmakers promoting films. A long time ago, filmmakers didn't promote their films. They would have agents promoting their films, right? Mm -hmm. But indie filmmakers have always, for the most part, been promoting their own films. There's so many creative ways to 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 do that we've gotten so accustomed to social media as being the vehicle for all everything we do online but there are other things like for example levi and ryan this podcast 
is one vehicle for promoting your film, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another way to do it is, of course, there's, of course, there's media, but there's, um, I mean, uh, on social media, but there's also the fact that you can reach out to someone who has a publication, Mm -hmm. say, hey, will you write about my film, you know, or interview me or whatever. Another way of doing it is starting your own blog on your website, getting a website, starting a blog and writing about your your video, Mm -hmm. your films. Another way to do it, which I think is also overlooked is is public speaking engagements looking for ways to speak you made your film already right Mm -hmm. so you could go to libraries you could go to colleges you could you know try and get into classes and things like that where they will give you some time usually if you're an alumni that helps a little bit and they'll give you some time to speak to the students you're successful you're in the industry they're studying and you can share some tidbits and they always love to have someone like that come out and speak and then at film events what are some other ways that you guys have tried i'll start with ryan ryan (laughs) um it is one of the more challenging things and i wish that as well as i've done with it i've also there's a lot that i could see that i could still do plenty of and um one of the one of the key pieces that i would say is um you know everybody yeah everybody has their phone or maybe you're shooting with your phone and you're taking like your behind the scenes photos, but you know, consider also reaching out to someone while you're making your movie to just be a dedicated on set uh, photographer for a few of the days that you have. So that way, there's just somebody who that's their focus, um, and you can get some great shots of yourself directing and the actors, um, you know, doing their thing as well. And we did that for my feature film, Married and Loving It. Uh, I had a a filmmaking friend of mine, uh, John, come on board just for to sh- to uh, do those pieces. Uh, so it gives a lot of behind the scenes stuff. So while you are posting later on social media, you have a lot of content that you can um, push out. And then we also took the time on one of the days we knew it was a short day uh, for filming. So we set aside time for each of the actors to step away and recorded um, kind of like just a behind the scenes like questionnaire about like, What's it like being on set? What do you think of the script? Things like mm. that. And um, so that we had some of that content to publish out as well. One of the things that I that I just barely did with my, my last short film, um, the uh, the Frankenstein one, is start thinking of the poster ahead of time so that while I had the actors, I could take yeah. the photos that I would need yeah. in order to put together a poster because I'm always trying to then find it later Um in a a still frame or behind the scenes photos that we have. And I think that oftentimes when you see a poster that's obviously not done really well, um, it's pretty easy to see that that's, that they've, whoever that was, wasn't having the same struggles Mm -hmm. that I was um, when you're always trying to pull from a behind the scenes photo. So those kind of things, if you can think of them ahead of time, if you're going to have a poster, that's going to be photography, things like that. Um, yeah, the previews your your poster ahead of time. Shoot behind the scenes stuff that you're going to need because you're going to need these little sound bites to go along. Um, I mean, you have studio lights and all sorts of things there already, mm-hmm. where you can use them to 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 get like even group shots of mimicking a scene or something like that. Just something fun like that, well lit, because mm-hmm. that helps a lot for posters because that way the more pixels, the the, the bigger you can blow them up. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'd be just taking that time while everybody's together yeah. to um, to shoot these things because you know your actor might be somebody who's coming in from out of town. You know, you're not sure when you can see them again, and it's going to be hard to try to try to meet up just to shoot a behind the scenes interview with them. So try to grab that while you have, and then that, that gives you some small uh, some small bites you can use. And then behind the scenes photography, like just have somebody who's that's just their job yeah. for that day, um, and helping out in that aspect because otherwise you're going to get a bunch of selfies that's the other thing is and those are fun too at times but um sometimes you just want a great shot yeah of yourself like directing in the moment the movie. yeah 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 um and something that's candid and not just always like a group photo where everybody's looking at the camera yeah. and smiling yeah um and, but then it's like really after that the the bigger struggle and this is something we kind of brought up a little bit off air is and when you're a filmmaker, what's that line or of being a filmmaker and now a content creator at the same time? Mm. And God, I would in a dream world, I would have somebody who's like an 
an intern from the yeah. local college just handle all the social media stuff for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, because it's daunting to try to like constantly uh, be doing and promoting yeah. and engaging and yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Constantly pushing that. And then on top of that, let's say you have like a life event and you're like, Ooh, I'm going to add this, but it has like nothing to do with any of the movies yeah. that you're making and <laughs> whatever. She's like, Oh, and then there's a baby. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but anyways, you know, tune back in tomorrow while we cut up someone in our yeah. film. Um, <laughs> uh, so and then I fear, I wonder, and this is, I'm posing now just questions that you guys can chime in, but like, you know, if you, you have your filmmaker account and then you have like, maybe you started an account for the film itself and then maybe you have like an account for your production team and it's like, you're trying to manage all three yep. of these. Yeah. Pieces. We did kind of go over yeah. this at some point with the branding thing where I was telling people concentrate more on your own personal account than creating too many separate mm-hmm. ones for yeah. films. Cause then they fade out anyways. And then they're just mm-hmm. sitting there and all your content that was fantastic is still there. Yeah. You yeah. know, what I've started um, doing, uh, yeah. Ryan and Susie as well, but what I've started doing is, uh, specifically with Instagram is, uh, you can, you can invite collaborators. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, yeah. So I've been doing that with paralysis, uh, to my main account where if I get, uh, you know, if it's something that applies to both and it always does because I'm the right. filmmaker and that's my film. Um, I now, uh, do it as a collaboration between paralysis and me. So it's on both profiles. Um, yeah, yeah, I've been doing that with my personal yeah. one and, uh, just so that everybody knows, let's chime in with our Instagrams, right? Cause maybe sure. people want to see what yeah. we've got on there. Mine is Susie Botello official and the other one is mobile film SD. Uh, mine is at Levi Austin Morris. And then the films, uh, Instagram is at paralysis, the film. Ryan. Um, yeah, you can find me at Ryan dot mcdonald dot filmmaker and uh yeah that's that's my instagram so yeah so yeah. so instagram and and the other thing that i wanted to kind of ask you about levi is is social media the only way that you normally market or are you doing other things or or are do you have any ideas for doing other things so i i um I'm going to piggyback first off of something that Ryan had said. Um, um, so we, uh, for our, for paralysis, our producer was our behind the scenes, um, photographer. So she threw out every shooting day was shooting stuff and it made for very interesting content, um, for, I mean, specifically for us because we did, uh, crowdfund and raise money, um, through, uh, a crowdfunding, uh, platform. Um, it, it benefited us so that the people who contributed could constantly see, updates on what we were working on and that we were putting the money toward what we said we were. Um, so I think that that's beneficial. I also think that fellow artists really appreciated that fellow creators really appreciated that because we ended up, uh, getting more and more followers, uh, based off of, you know, hashtags that we were using or, you know, um, like indie filmmaker or mobile filmmaking, like, uh, we, our, our page just grew more and more. Um, I also think that uh, making interesting things, maybe not directly related to the behind the scenes, can be fun for people if it's engaging. Um, so like uh, we we have the sleep paralysis uh, demon in our film and I photoshopped her head onto a tiny, cute little body and I would like make little <laughs> things for the posts um, yeah. just for engaging people. I remember yeah, these. Yeah, and people thought it was cute and they thought it was fun and, you know... Um, but also the planning the poster thing, I think, is so smart. It's something that we started doing uh, that I started doing during the tea. Um, we I, I had planned ahead of time what I wanted that poster to look like. And every film since I have planned the poster ahead of time. Um, actually, I did not plan. I, I'm, I can't take credit for paralysis. Uh, the paralysis poster I was still uh, considering, but we had set up lights for one of our shots. Um, and it was the light coming through the back door, sort of like imitating moonlight. 
and uh, an actor was standing in front of it. And one of our one of the people on set was like, oh, God, this is a really cool photo. And she started snapping photos of our lead actress in that spot. And then I was like, let's get the hag in there. And then I got over there and I started taking shots as well. And that ended up being our poster. Um, I just played with it uh, nice. and edited it. Yeah. So so I think uh, I think being open to moments on set as well, because we were in the middle of setting up a shot and it just happened to catch somebody's eye. And I saw that moment and I was like, this is so good. And this is going to be the poster. Um, so, yeah, being open to it. Um as far as things that are like not social media things, um, I'm sort of just entering that phase with paralysis. Like we're getting to the point of self-distribution. But I will say, building off of something that Susie said, one of the things that we did is we reached out to various publications to get um, reviews to see if people were interested mm-hmm. in reviewing the film. Um, and I think, I mean, on IMDb, I think we have seven critic film reviews but i think i think we probably have closer to like 10 or 13 that some of them are not on imdb um and then uh somebody posted the film on letterbox which is another social media app for um films and people can rate and review them and so like now users who have seen it at film festivals have started to review the film on letterbox uh as well which is both there's there's a good and a bad to that. Like I think I think reviews, filmmakers in general take it with a grain of salt. Um, but uh, but also like it, it's a great marketing thing. Um, for us, uh, I think some of the perks that we came up with for paralysis have sort of grown legs and uh, sort of given new life to our marketing. So. We had those little Haggerty Ann dolls that we created for uh, some of our contributors if they, you know, contributed a certain amount of money. And at this point, um, that has become kind of a massive tool for us in our social media marketing, as well as when we're actually at a festival. Um, we bring one of those dolls with to every single festival, and then during the festival, um, I think, God, when did I start doing it? it I, was it? It might have. Did I? Did I, I, I? Did I give it away at your festival or not, Susie? I I don't remember. I don't remember. I it might have it. been I after that. It. Yeah, it might have been after that because um, yours was only the second festival we were in. So I don't I don't know if I actually gave it away um, at your festival. But um, I I think starting at our third or fourth festival, we started giving away uh, one of those dolls at every. Um, every festival like well during the q a or if there's somebody who seemed to really really enjoy the film um and like we have a moment with them we'll we'll let them have the doll and then they ultimately end up posting it on social media and tagging us that is actually a (laughs) really good idea in 2013 i'm just now remembering this um i still have this this thing it's a it's like a plush toy Mm -hmm. basically one of the winners uh, of the short films mm-hmm. back then, uh, the filmmakers uh, gave me. They they walked up to me and gave me this one of the characters yeah. in the film, yeah. and it was it was so cute. Yeah. It was such a cute gift. I totally did not expect yeah. it, but that's right. But it it's ends up sitting being, at the foot of my bed yeah, right now. It ends up being a very memorable thing, um, and I feel like it sort of adds to the experience. So. At the mm-hmm. festival in Australia, for instance, what we got to do is uh, I during the Q and A, you know, we were doing that, and I'm like, oh, I do have this doll, and then the festival director was like, oh, let's do it like a wedding bouquet, so anybody who's interested, come down, and then Levi will throw it behind him. So it ended up being this memorable thing in general <laughs> at the festival, um, yeah. and the woman who won it like posted on social media, and you know, she's following both my page and uh, and the 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 film, but. Um, it's just something that like they'll if they So I would call to, this gamifying it. Call it what? It's like it's like gamifying your your yeah. marketing. Like kind of making it like a fun game. Immersive having experience a strategy. Or, yeah. 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 Something people can engage with. Yeah. Well, you made it into a little bit of a competition, too. Yeah. I mean, well, I, it, it it was different for every festival, but um, yeah. And I wish I had the foresight to do it at every festival. But, you know, it's one of those things, like Ryan said, like indie filmmakers it, it's not really something that you want to do and you wish you could certainly hire somebody to do it for you um but uh it is a necessity 
and it's something you have to get creative with. And so it's fun to think of creative things that you can do. Um, and, and it is very much a trial and error. Some things work and some things don't. We've had posts that had no engagement and I was like, great, now we won't do another one like that. You know, another thing to do is going on that same theme of having a photographer to create content. Another thing that you could do is, is literally create a documentary. Ooh, that's so much more work though. (laughs) I'm going to share again what Joey did here with one of the films that he worked on which I put it I shared it on the on the last episode but for those of you who missed it I'll share it again in the notes here it's basically he and a couple other people that were working with him were shooting a documentary basically it was more like a vlog were telling their experience on working on this film you know they were staying at an Airbnb and then they were walking over to the set and then they got some shots of the set. It's not like a full on documentary. Mm. It's vlog style documentary in a way, but it was very well done. And Joey uh, edited that. And I know he can't speak to it right now, but I just, I just want to let you know that people do vlogs anyways you know, when they do their live, you know, talking head thing. But this this other way of doing it is a little more productive. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I also think that uh, if you do go the festival route, really use um, your announcements as, you know, like you're your, like, oh, we got into a film festival. You know, that is that is absolutely an incredible marketing tool, um, not only for the yes. festivals and, you know, and they're putting on uh, it's a lot of work to put on a festival. So, like, they want you to. Uh, I have no idea what yeah, you're talking exactly, about. Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, but they, <laughs> they want you to share. Uh, but also, like, it ends up being just a, an exciting thing to share with your audience and to engage with your audience. And so I think, um, like, updating your poster or, you know, like, even choosing stills from, you know, maybe, like, unreleased stills that, you know, you haven't shared yet and, and throw the laurel on there. Um, just so yeah. it's like, oh, that's a new image I haven't seen of, of this project. Um yeah, I think I think yeah. On on top of that though, like uh, you know, if you, when you're when you're submitting to a film festival, a lot of them always check to see if you know how much is the feedback mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. submission part. Now I don't condone every one of those on the festival fees per se, but there's a, some of them offer it as part of their festival. Sure, uh, some of them, it's it's like they're they just offer it just within any submission. Yeah, some of them you have to pay for it, but. Um, and it's not always bad. I, I, there was a festival that reviewed uh, my feature film, Married and Loving It, and you can tell from the way that they reviewed it that they, they just they would never have liked the movie to begin. with sure. Anyways, yeah. Like there's just certain things that they just didn't get the brand of, the, of humor some of the, or yeah, yeah yeah exactly like it was just um, but they almost irritantly like wrote like it has more f words than a Quentin Tarantino movie. As if that's an insult? Hello? Yeah. Well, I think they probably meant it as a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, no, based upon the rest of the review, like you could tell that they didn't get the movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. By any means. So you should have worn that as a badge of honor and put that on your poster. It is. Like, is it? It is. Hell yeah. <laughs> it is on the poster. Yes, <laughs> use that. It is absolutely. absolutely on poster. I love because that, that was, so Because that was what I was... I didn't, you know, I, I, at the, this moment, still, it's the only feature film I've made. So I was in my mind going, like, if you have one shot and I wanted it to be like Casino or Big Lebowski, we're just going to have, you know, X amount of F word count. So, yeah. Um, so when I got that, as the person was like, it's just, you know, this is that. And it has more F words than the Quentin Tarantino movie. And I was like, ooh, like, you said that as a negative. Yeah. But honestly I well, they really that. did mean it as that's a negative, smart huh? that's so mm-hmm. smart yeah that's um and so yeah so it's the first thing you see on the poster Hell yeah uh so you know you take you, t- you find a way to you find the gems and some of the sound yeah. bites that people give you back uh and where you can where you can use those to put on top of your picture like yeah. you're saying for when you go to post it and definitely utilize the laurels as you get them you know jason jason said something about what a great festival it was right mm-hmm. And um, I quoted him on it and put it on as a quote in one of our one of the articles that I wrote Hell about yeah. the festival. Yeah. And, then, and then I did you, you, you in my podcast. You can always go back and, and 
you know, it doesn't have to be your podcast. You can always go back to one of our podcasts, right? Uh, together, uh, Levi, uh-huh. and say, you know, uh, hey, I like I like what I said here, and just pull that quote and add it on to something. Sure, you know, yeah. Whether it was something you said or whether it was something I said, yeah. you know. I sure gave you enough compliments. I'm sure you can pull something. <laughs> I mean, we do already have three on our poster, so I would have to use it somewhere yeah, else. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but for other people, sometimes they don't think of yeah. things like that. When someone says something about you, yeah. especially in a public um, format, like don't go. I, I don't think it's nice to publish emails and things like that that are meant for you sure. and messages and texts and things like that. But I think it's okay if it's put out by that person out in public, right, mm-hmm. that you can take that as a quote. Look what they said about my thing, yeah. you know, my movie. That's another one. Now, what about, have you guys ever, this is something that I don't see anymore, that I used to see a lot, where, which is the postcards. I, People making postcards I po- for their oh, films. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I brought yeah, I them postcards. to every festival. Uh, I, I messaged or I sent them out. Um, yeah, so we, we definitely have postcards. Beyond the festivals, though, I mean... Yeah. Because the people that are already there are already there, but yeah. what about, you know... Well, well I also, I, I have business cards, so I have the postcards as well, mm-hmm. with a QR code, mm-hmm. to, to so people can find the film. Uh, but I also have business cards, so anytime I'm out and about when, and find myself chatting about the movie, um, then I can, I can pull a business card and hand it over where they can scan it. Take yeah. them to the film at, and it has a list of the laurels that we want. It has yeah. the F thing on there. Hell yeah. Um, and then so so we, and then like, in a few weeks here, uh, in Park City, we're going to be having Sundance, and so like as I'm going up there for as I said already for another festival, um, only a few days before Sundance, like I'm I'm bringing I got a stock of photo yeah. of posters, That's smart, and business cards. I'm planning on littering that town with. Um, so if you happen to Park City anytime that's around that area, uh, let me know if you see a poster. Um, <laughs> uh, I've Tag had, uh, There's Ryan. also ways, because you <laughs> yeah. were talking about the, the QR code. Something I've done at, at events before was I would create a page on my website just with stuff I would want to say to someone at an event mm, mm-hmm. that I was like networking in. And then I would create a code, sure. QR code, and uh, with a graphic or whatever, and then just laminate it. Yeah. And then I would take it with me. And when someone would ask, because, you know, give, I, I would get business cards. And unless I quickly wrote something behind the business card or somewhere on there about that person to recall who it was that gave it to me, mm-hmm. I'd have no idea who that was. You know, yeah. especially if you, if you get it, if you find it, you know, weeks later or something. Ah, which one was this one? Well, I went. Well, I I created my, mine was like a. That. It was a poster. It was a business card size, and I keep it in a business card holder. But it's not. It's not. It doesn't have my contact info on it. It's. It's a poster of the film, and on the back side is, like Laurel's reviews, and then, um, yeah, and then the QR code. But in yeah. that size, um, but if you put the QR code onto a web page, just a one single page with an image, maybe some quotes of reviews. And the the embed of the trailer or something like all in one place, yeah. like people will scan it and see it right there and then. Mm-hmm. And I've done that. I I did that at Comic Con and places like that. The other day, somebody I regretted it because the other uh, the other day I went out and I happened to mention mention the podcast with several people, and I was astounded. This is happening more where people say, "Oh." Oh, where can I find it? Mm-hmm. Where is it? How? And I can give them the URL, but I'm thinking I need to get, you know, create something like that for yeah. myself or where I can just say, here, scan the code yeah. or or print business cards. I'm due for business cards anyways, but still, I think the QR codes are underrated. Yeah, um, I mean, you can literally open it up to a movie right there and then wherever mm-hmm. you happen to be. Building off of what Ryan is saying, uh, I went to AFM, uh, American Film Market, with uh, my producer and uh, my lead actress, just to uh, sort of... um, 
And you saw and you met up with uh, James and Caroline there? Yeah, no, 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 no. I met with them. Uh, they were here for a film festival. So I met with them to oh, go okay. see uh, their film at the festival, um, which was fantastic. It's it's I mean, it's unrelated to this, but it is a fantastic yeah. film. And I think everybody should see it. It's very funny. And um, it's a fantastic couple. They're an incredible couple. I adore them. Uh, but yeah, AFM, uh, but we, we brought both the postcards and we have business cards also with a QR code to sort of bring, uh, somebody to the trailer, the, uh, the, the IMDB, our, um, our reviews. Um, but also I think the main thing that I, just me in general, I think as a person and as a filmmaker, um, I received a lot of business cards when I was at AFM from a lot of different people, um, it really is the people that I had a genuine connection with that I remember, um, that I was excited to share my project about. So I think, I think, um, and I know it's like, it's an exhausting and daunting thing, but like still focus on having genuine connections with people, um, because they'll Mm -hmm. be more excited about seeing your project. They'll be more excited about supporting your project. Um, if you're just schmoozing, um, if you're just sort of looking to uh, climb a ladder, it it's it's obvious, it's visible, it's it's uninteresting, and people are not going to remember you. Um, or if they do, they'll remember you for the wrong. Another reasons. thing I've seen on some business cards and things, photos of people, and I never in my life thought about doing that myself oh, yeah. until I saw it, and I was like, this is how you remember. I mean, unfortunately, ours is the hag. It's not my minutes. face, but uh. <laughs> well, but you, <laughs> yeah. but you're the director. Yeah. You're the filmmaker. Yeah. These are kind of the replacement for a business card, I think. Yeah. And and I'm not I'm not in for printing. I'm not I'm not really. I I don't promote printing thing. I'm like I love trees. <laughs> sure. So, could call me a tree hugger or whatever you want to call me, but. I think the QR code is just perfect for that because you can build a page with links and embeds and things like that. Um, But if you're going to print a business card of some sense, I could tell you from my own experience, as soon as one of those cards that I had uh, from the many that I had, had a picture on it, it's like, oh, I remember talking to this person. Yeah. And I I would say another thing building off of something that you said a while ago, Susie, is um, taking every opportunity that's like offered. If it if it if I mean, I would say not every opportunity like 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 have boundaries. Boundaries are healthy. Um, But uh, taking the opportunities um, that, you know, that that inspire you or excite you or whatever. Like I I uh, I know somebody I worked with somebody who is a filmmaker about 10 years ago on a web series um, and we've stayed social media friends, but we haven't really engaged with each other. And while I was in Australia, he reached out and he said, I'm teaching students film now um, and I'm really inspired by your journey with paralysis. And I would love for you to come and speak uh, to the students about the process of making this film, about uh, making a film with no budget and being resourceful and all those things. And so we haven't scheduled it yet because holiday break happened, but um, in the new year, I will be uh, going and speaking about that. And that is, you know, e- even though it's an educational thing for these students, it's also incredibly uh, incredible marketing for for the film, you know, and to talk about with people who are future filmmakers and are excited about filmmaking. So, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying about, you know, basically public speaking yeah. almost. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's you just don't know who you speak with that who you take the time to to talk to and entertain and inspire with with what you're doing, how they're going to respond and remember you later either. Yeah. Bring you up because people will bring you up in conversations when the subject comes up. I know I have a lot of friends from way back then who would walk up to me and go, hey, (laughs) somebody at the Academy Awards or whatever shot (laughs) something. I think it was like that sugar. What was that name of that documentary? It was about the artist, the the musician, the singer. Sugar Man. Sugar Man. Yes. Uh When that came out and that guy won an award and they found out that he shot part of it, the ending, really, Mm, uh, with with his phone. Yeah. Uh, people on my Facebook, I mean, I got all kinds of messages and things and they were like, Oh, we thought of you. I thought yeah. of you. And I was like, Oh my God. Yeah. 
I mean, a lot of my friends refer to me uh, as like I'm the mobile film guy. Um, right. Because I make I've made a lot of films uh, with a mobile film or with a mobile. Yeah. I mean, with a mobile camera. Yeah. Um, mm. So uh, I'm I'm not ashamed of that. Like that. There's there's pride in that. And I feel like it may, maybe maybe that's my brand. But I I, I think. Uh, yeah, that's not my brand. I have more to my brand. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, the the, mo- I, the mobile film guy is not like the most. I mean, because there are people who get that. Yeah. Um, now, I was called a long time ago. Somebody on LinkedIn called me the the mobile film make, mobile film uh, diva, and I was like, okay, wear no. that with pride. <laughs> you, you, I know I say this to you. Out of all people, you're like, wear it. Yeah. Uh, but at the time, I was like, I'm not a diva, you know. It's like girl, a, a mobile girl. filmmaking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still um, people I went to film school with ten years ago when I make when I made the latest short film, I still message them and hit them up to be like, hey, remember when we were you know shooting whatever ten years ago? Yeah. Well, now I went and did this Frankenstein film. I like, check it out. Um, That's cool. So you still hold the connections and yeah. keep on uh, networking, especially if, when you meet people from. Different places like Caroline James. That was a bit, they they reshared my film across the pond. Yeah. Um, and you know, and it's just like helping get out of that little um, bubble that little bubble that you might be in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that if you're doing it right, one of the great pleasures I have is, let's say I'm out in, I'm out in town and I'm bumping to people who I do know, um, and they're already they're already juiced into what I was doing. Yeah. They can be like, Oh, Hey, like, Oh man, I saw your film or Hey, like how'd that go? Or how'd you shoot go? And it's like, we're already halfway into a conversation that I didn't even have to start. Yep. They didn't have to like say, cause, cause, because they are seeing the content because I'm pushing the content out there yep. as well. Um, so they know I'm filming something and, or that if, or it's done or that's finished or whichever. Or and when's so the next one coming or yeah, yeah. 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 So if you're doing it right, then people should know, people will know, that you've been working on something yeah. that's going to be amazing that's coming up and that you're traveling the world with it or and I, I like now however it goes. even even with what you're saying like I think like I mean it's kind of like but okay fa- rewind like to basically 20 2016 I like I I've, I've been a filmmaker for a while but in 2016 um I decided to uh really try to make the bulk of my money from doing commissions and art and stuff. Um, because I, I, I was tired of holding down these part-time jobs while trying to pursue my, my, my film endeavors. And I thought, Oh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do painting for supplemental income and then I'll do my filmmaking. And I got so sucked into, to my painting stuff, Mm -hmm. my commissions and everything, because people were asking for them that I all, ultimately basically stopped working on film and I was so unhappy. And at one point, one of my friends was like, well, aren't you happy? Isn't this what you want? Cause all I was posting was painting stuff. Um, and I realized, no, like I need to be promoting. It's also a little bit about manifestation, you know, like I need to be promoting what I want to do, what, 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 like, like the work that I've done, yeah. you know, the, the project that I'm working on. So like I started I was, at, at that point, I was like, you know what? I, I stopped taking commissions. Um, I started posting like, OK, you know, I've got this many scripts done. I've got, you know, like I, I, I'd like to go into production, you know, like and just more. Mm-hmm. Um, that's also that's actually a good way to get people to hop in. Yeah. It's almost an invitation. I'm working on a screenplay yeah. and then you get start to get messages from people people hey when you're done with that or if you ever want someone's opinion or i mean if you're gonna shoot it that's right? literally how i got my producer for paralysis like i i, I was <laughs> i was friends we had a mutual friend and i met her at the mutual friends goodbye party when the when the friend was moving to colorado from la um and she and i followed each other on social media um, and then when I finished the script for paralysis and posted about it, she was like, Hey, I'm a producer. I love horror. This is what I want to do with my life. Like, let's do this. And I was very hesitant. We had a zoom meeting that was supposed to last for 30 minutes and it lasted for two hours. And now she's one of my very best friends and we produce together, you know, like she's, she's absolutely incredible. Um, and you know, it, it came from literally a social media engagement. So can't knock them. Can't knock it. Can't knock it. <laughs> Can't knock it. Yeah. And then at the same time, keep keep a knocking. Yeah. Because you you know that's the other thing too. It it makes it very hard. So would you guys say that, in a way, even though there's a filmmaker 
is not technically a content creator, would you say that filmmakers also do need to be content creators for the marketing part? I mean, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, you're no right. longer, if you're going to be an indie, indie film director, like you're, you're not just the director and you're not just the writer either. Like you are the producer. Yeah. Even if, if in Levi's case we had a producer, like you're here to see the movie all the way to the end. And that end yeah. is an, is beyond its distribution mm-hmm. too. Um, so it's not, so, uh, because content you know. creators are, are aside from filmmakers, a lot of content creators, like a podcasting is, podcaster is a content creator creating content but it's not a film it's a podcast it's a show it's a program yeah and there are people who do that uh without having any connection to film but i think it's like ryan is saying that you get to do all play all these multiple parts but they don't necessarily have to be part of filmmaking i mean they just come into filmmaking they come in and they help uh, as a tool kind of like You know, even though Joey can't say it right now, I would love to be able to just have Joey answer about and share. But he shared it before that he cooks for the crew. Yeah. You know, he makes sure that they got they get their energy from food and he makes that food for them. And that's not a filmmaker's hat, per se. Right. (laughs) Um, Crafties for cheap. (laughs) Crafties for cheap, Joey. Crafties for cheap. (laughs) Yep. So, so there's, there's so many, so many things. So probably at the beginning of all of this, once, once our listeners are listening to all these examples and maybe you're taking a mental note on these things, you know, going on to podcast articles, uh, whether you're doing online or in-person events, uh, cards and, and promo cards with QR codes or business cards, speaking engagement at schools, whatever it may be, while you're getting all these things in your head going, I could do this, I could do that. Forming a strategy, Mm -hmm. I think, is is the key to getting you there so you don't get overwhelmed. How do you how do you because you you were bringing this up about being healthy about it? How do you form a strategy, you know, over time? Like, for example, during production, you want to you want to do something during production especially the accumulation of your content right the photographs and all those opportunities and little videos and whatever so and maybe some promotion too right yeah and then after that during post you want to keep keep up the momentum going and then after that as you're getting into film but at some point there are times when it's like timing is it's got to be like snappy yeah. Because things are happening, right? Yeah. So for paralysis, at, at least during production and just post-production, um, I had actually sat down with my producer and we actually created a schedule of what we would be posting. Um, and so it, it was like a four hour meeting and we actually went through and we were like, this is what we're going to do this day. This is what we're going to do this day. We, we were as we weren't uh, as married to it as um, maybe the project itself. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, exactly. Um, we we were open to things changing. So if if people were not engaging with certain things, we would switch it up. If people were engaging more with certain things, we would do more of that. Um, and then uh, post the post project, it really is about. I mean, at least for me, like I I I. I like to engage, but I'm also like, I don't want to annoy people. I don't want to be like, Oh look, another thing, another, this, another, that. So it's, it's more like, um, if, if something is exciting, if there's exciting news, if there's movement, if there's something, um, it's coming up with a creative thing to post in that moment. Um, and so, uh, or, you know, planning when we'll post it, you know? Um, I just heard, I just heard, uh, Joey's mind sort of say, you know, that quantity is important in this thing. I mean, it is, it is because, yeah. uh, it, it, but, but I also like with that quantity, I think that there needs to be some substance to it. I, um, instead of just like, please go check out paralysis or please do this. You know, it's like, um, check out this cool thing or look at this unseen, uh, un- yet to be seen behind the scenes or like, 
uh, check out what people are saying, you know, like it's, it's creative ways of, of presenting that quantity, you know? Great. Yeah. Um, so, all right, Ryan, what was your, did you have an actual strategy for yours? Oh, probably not as well. One as well played as uh, Levi's. I know that's. Uh, I uh, I mean that. I did <laughs> it, with Marion. I learned. did. I did sit down and go. I was gonna try to make a post. You know, try to do it daily, and it was gonna be like memes that I would create. Yeah. For like on Thursday, um, then it was like gonna be behind the scenes on this day, things like that. Um, it's just it's hard to keep up, and that's where I've. It is. Said, it is. Gosh, so I would love to, to have consistent. Um, yeah. You know, somebody who's. Maybe that's their, maybe that's the, um, they're assigned it, a job or something. Yeah. But, um, but they, they'll do their assigned job for a little to no money, mm-hmm. uh, depending on our budget. Um, well, I think also th- there's, there's a thing about having, you know, one of the advantages that, that Levi has is the group team thing. Uh, they're, they I won't lie though. I am the together. only one who does the social media, so nobody else does the social media. <laughs> but you formed a strategy and the schedule, and you stay on top of yeah. it, right? I, I remember you telling me something at one point that you were taking turns on something, on a part of that. Uh, it, it's probably when we were doing, uh, when we were building uh, the the Instagram. One of the things that we were doing is we were coming up with. Uh, the contest yeah, contests creative stories so like like every week it would be written by somebody new on the team um and that was leading up to and it was just like a fun little engaging thing to do with people uh leading up to the release of our campaign it was how can we draw people to our page and so it was like uh we were creating sort of a story as we went um and the audience could engage with it um and and we did the the sort of hashtag uh challenge and the person who came up with the best hashtag uh ended up being the slogan for our film um which is sweet screams thank you jackie pimental for that um but uh yeah uh but there's there's a lot of um fun and engaging things that we came up with as a team and even the perks like when we were coming up with the perks we had meetings and uh the the guy who's the composer for our film is the one who came up with the haggerty and dolls and they ended up being one of the most successful things that we have so um it's just yeah like like that was you know we had a team of eight I would, so i would yeah. say also coming from my background in sales um there were a lot of times with just just promoting our film festival uh by itself like sometimes way back in the beginning, it would it would feel awkward because I was with people and I could be at a grocery store and I would be with someone and they were like, oh, God, she's like networking at the grocery store, basically mm. uh, promoting the film festival. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, like you think like, oh, there's a you know, like people have networking events, right? Mm hmm. Uh, because, you know, you're going to find people that are all acquainted with that one thing, whatever that is, whether it's film or music or entrepreneurship, whatever it may be. But the thing is that you can walk out of your front door, walk down the street, go to the Starbucks or whatever, and there, wherever there are people, there is no reason. I, I am the living proof of this. <laughs> It seemed like everyone that I speak to, some, for some reason, has some connection to somebody who wants to make a movie, mm. and they may this may be really cool for them making a movie with a smartphone, or someone who wants to be an actor, and then I'm turning that well, actors should be making movies with their phones and getting their work out there and blah blah blah, you know. You don't have to go to a specific event yeah. to network with people. You have free people, free audiences out there. I've I've started talking to, you know, three people at a Starbucks. And next thing I know, I had, you know, 12 people listening to me, mm-hmm. you know. And it's because you just have to, and this happens more when you're passionate about yep. your project, yep. right? Did you ever do things like that? I mean, I recently started dating again, and I feel like every date is like me marketing my film. 
<laughs> They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm an indie filmmaker. Let me tell you about paralysis. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's the biggest, the best pickup line yeah. of the year. And we just started. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that is an audience. Sure. You know, it, and it started back <laughs> when I would say, you have a phone. Did you know you can make a movie with a phone? Who doesn't have a phone? Yeah. Who doesn't have a story? Who doesn't know somebody who likes to watch movies? You know, things like that. Yeah. It's just a matter of, I guess, in a way, you do have to be able to engage in conversation with complete strangers. Yeah. But that's what you're doing in networking anyways. Yeah. So, guys, I think... I think we've given everyone some pretty good, absolutely, good juice. Yeah, that, that <laughs> felt very productive and. Yeah, you know. I think I think you know, um, for for our listeners, just select some of these things, and and just start working on them instead of just doing the same things that you normally do or that you see other people doing. Try to try to come up with creative ideas of your own. Um, and, and don't think like you need, you know, a thousand likes for people to listen or to hear you or to remember you Yeah. at, you know, and to think of you and to contact you. And then when they start their projects, when they know how passionate you were about yours, mm-hmm. when they're starting their passionate project, they may contact you as well yeah i have a lot of friends who have reached out to me uh since since the tea probably um Mm. asking for that would be me yeah (laughs) Uh, asking for advice on uh how to begin smartphone filmmaking so like you know i've 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 certainly uh been a massive spokesperson but i think that like just in general being open to you know like once you start creating sort of that platform for yourself uh being open to people reaching out and asking those questions and yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah listen and to I, fade I into see. film and the fate yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes listen to fade into listen to the sbb podcast okay guys if that's the case because i feel like we really rounded this up yeah, pretty well I, I agree so go and uh follow these guys and Make sure you stay tuned to all the news that we're going to be coming out with at, on a timely manner now that we've hit 2024. I also want to let the filmmakers who've been submitting films to our film festival, we have one last deadline, and that is January 13. Wow. January 13th is up. the deadline, and that's the shorts. That's the last of the shorts <laughs> hmm. uh, to be submitted. Watch your emails. Don't want to miss emails from us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward. Start clearing out the calendars, even if you don't participate in the film festival. It's open to everybody. I mean, last year and, we had uh, that guy come who wasn't a part of the festival. Yeah, that's so cool, right? Okay, so do we have... Did you, did you guys memorize the song that I sent you guys an email? This little song for the Fade Into Film that we were going to sing together in unison? You're a liar, <laughs> Susie. You're a liar and you know it. <laughs> Wait, it's, it's not April Fool's in January? No? Okay. <laughs> uh, well, there is one song that we always sing, and that is goodbye, listeners. Bye. See you next time.